second, but I doubt they can't even come better way. Always seeing them riding our wave, AI way. We causing a mayday when they vacate our open floodgates. Hey, I'm sliding on home plate. But they think this is where the hate isn't up with the big opposition gon' rotate. Can I say that their opinion won't make or break us? The result leave them shot like a circuit breaker, like when Moses had lifted the serpent, save us. It's the difference between Cain and Abel. When Christ comes, that's when they time come. But, but they stay pushing that hate. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, him that rebuke in the gate. Yeah. I see the looks on their face, look on they face. But I can't be dismayed. No. God sent me on a mission me on a to mission. show Jacob that he's sinning. Jacob that he's to sinning. teach Israel repentance. Israel and repentance. we don't care if they don't feel it. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. hey him that rebuke in the gate. I see the looks on their face, face, but I can't be dismayed. Nah. God sent me on a mission me on to show mission. Jacob that he so sent it, to sent teach Israel repentance. Hey. And we don't care if they don't feel it. Hey, hey, prophets coming, you should make way. Exceeding army looking great, great. Back again, oh, you thought we were wait, wait. We been fishing, this a little bait. Taste cake, swinging heavy, but the gate straight. Niggas claiming they gorilla with it, but the monkey pen has been on great. Hey, hey, heavy on my haters, couldn't better breastplate. Wait, how the hell they gonna make haste? We been moving like freight trains. They been moving like it's a line in the way, wait. They been eyeing us from way, wait. In the back, it look like they try to play it safe. It look like they try to play the fence. We been out here trying to make the gate. So we been hyperbolic chamber training. Sending God to Satan. You can't hang unless it's with Haman. You can do all of that hating, but it's more the cause than a little blood on his raiment. When every step is bound to shuffle the pavement. Airy shouters with the power of the living God. Sun to rise, split skies. This a little more than you bargain for, ain't it? They got that feeling in their chest. Hey, but it's checkmate. The way Bishop slide, ain't no escape. To the rookie. It's time to let the vets play. You've been looking for us as a neck breaker, but you're stuck and you can only spectate. Hey, watching as we make a fresh slate, doing everything that the flesh can't. It's a reason that they feel it. Hey, 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 him that rebuke in the gate. Yeah. I see the looks on their face, Look on face, but I can't be dismayed. No. God sent me on a mission me on a to mission. show Jacob that he's sinning, that he's to teach sinning. Israel, repentance. Israel repentance. And we don't care if they don't feel it. Hey, 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 hey him that rebuke in the gate. They hate me. I see the looks on their face, face, but I can't be dismayed. Nah. God sent me on a mission me on a to show mission. Jacob that he's sinning, to sin. teach Israel repentance. Hey, and we don't care if they don't feel it. Hey, hey up, skirt, how about? Let them hear what we talking about. Yeah. Then I go in the Bible and show them they sins, and now they like, watch out. Like, who the hell told y'all to come round? Now they want the camp shut down. Hey, that's why we come with a hundred man camp, leave a stamp, let them know we ain't playing around. But they refuse to hearken. Hey, they pull away the soda. They love us when we cooning and rolling up the dozer. Hey, but we the men of God come to wake you up. This gospel folks, hey, to wake you out your coma. Hey, now you can smell the aroma. Hey, that's the stench of death. Speak up rightly, now they hate me. But praise me for marching in the streets. This prophecy and say what it say. My people evil, so full of hate. Wanna leave us dead on the floor. I guess black lives matter went out the door. The world hate me, you know it hated Christ. Precept and not a spirit slice. Scriptures cut and not a spirit dice. Blood touching blood. Now I feel like Zacharias, all righteous able, trying to serve the highest. But can't wanna slay me with extreme hatred. Can't see that we're trying to say That's why they hate. Hey, 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 him that rebuke in the gate. Yeah. I see the looks on their face, look on their face. But I can't be dismayed. No. God sent me on a mission me on a to mission. show Jacob that he's sinning, that he's to teach sinning. Israel, repentance. Israel repentance. And we don't care if they don't feel it. Hey, 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 hey him that rebuke in the gate. They hate me. I see the looks on their face, face, but I can't be dismayed. No. God sent me on a mission me on to a show mission. Jacob that he sent it, to sin. teach Israel repentance. Hey. And we don't care if they don't feel it. Hey. hey. Right check, right rise. check. Rise on the Once again. Might check one, one two, might check one deal. two. All praises to the most high. All praises to the most high. Shalom, family, shalom, most high in Christ bless. Most high in Christ bless. Ah, daily bread. All praises. We up early. We up up, up and at early. I've had my coffee. Therefore, I am um energized but the spirit of the lord first and foremost now let me not give credit to the coffee spirit of the lord the lord made that coffee you doggone right i'll pray to the boys most high shalom family most high christ bless also got a lie iuic jackson mississippi to my right officers arrive 
Ounce is Uriah. All pray to the Most High. So we're going to get ready to start Daily Bread here uh, in just a few seconds. Uh, the name of the class today is Satan's Trick Bag. Satan got a bag of tricks, right? And today we're going to edify you brothers and sisters to the best of our ability with the scriptures to show you exactly what that entails, okay? But before we do so, uh, let's give honor and glory to our Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ and set up prayers. Sisters, make sure your heads are covered. Brothers, make sure your heads are uncovered. All right, we're going to be reading from the book of uh, Psalms. Psalms chapter 92. All right, Psalms chapter 92 and verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery and upon the heart with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, has made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the work of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works and thy sight and thy thoughts, excuse me, are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of, uh, of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies. And mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing to show, the, show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and, my, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus the Christ, to die on the cross for us, that we may have a chance at eternal life, Lord. Thank you for the spirit you uh, placed upon our elders, Lord God, and passed it down to us, Lord, that we may learn to do righteousness and keep thy commandments and love thy way and fear thy name, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you continue to send your holy angels amongst us, Lord. Heal the sick amongst us, Lord. Heal those that are with child amongst us, Lord. Give us a little mercy in these last days, Lord God, as the things continue to ramp up, Lord God. And as you continue to, to uh, uh, raise up the 12 tribes of Israel, Lord God, continue to send your prophets out to the four corners of the earth, Lord. Send in more laborers, Lord, more brothers, more sisters, Lord, to make us complete, to make us that mighty nation that you said you was going to do, Lord God. We ask that you continue to do that which is right in your eyes. Give us the strength to do that which is right in your eyes, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. All praise. All praises, all praises to the most high. All praises. Okay. So, um, like mentioned before, tonight today's class is titled entitled Satan's Trick Bag. Now I don't know if we're gonna be able to put the uh scriptures on the screen so we can get um a brother described that'd be excellent. If we can get a brother described that that would be excellent. I said scribe. I don't know, it's messed up. I don't know, I don't see, I don't see something. The feed. Maybe my internet jacked up. We still streaming? We still good? Okay. All praise. All praise to the most high. All right. All right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, today, the, to, the name of today's class is Satan's Trick Bag, right? So, Satan got a, a bag of tricks that he often uses, right? And the scriptures gives us warning of that, right? This is why the scripture tells us to meditate in the word of God that we may prosper. Get that real quick in Joshua 1 and 8 for me. So the Lord has not made us ignorant of the devices of Satan. Um, he has not made us ignorant of the things that are to come upon us, right? And, and, and all praise to the most high, he has put the, the wisdom on our leadership throughout the years to continue to give us uh, tokens, right? To give us the understanding of the word of God so we may be able to to stand in the evil day. All right, get that real quick in Joshua 1 and 8 for me. 
Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Go ahead. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So that's how we're going to have good success in this walk. And that's how we're going to be prosperous in this walk. That's not saying that we're going to uh, be rich and wealthy beyond measure because we know this isn't our rest. But we can use this as a guide to show, hey, if we meditate in the commandments, if we continue to, to learn from our mistakes, uh, from our past life and from the mistakes that we have made in this truth and are making in this truth, and we can grow from that, we'll have prosperity in this walk. We'll be able to stand in that last day um, when the Most High sends his son and we may be found worthy. And that's what all our goals are. Every last one of our goals is when the Most High sends his son, Jesus Christ, that we're found worthy, you understand, to walk in that light, right, to be saved, to receive salvation, right? And this is something all our forefathers wanted, uh, would look for, right? All that, uh, get that real quick, it's in Luke, I believe. Luke chapter 2 It's about our foremother, Anna. It's Luke chapter 2. And I want to say, is, let me just give me one second. This is a different Bible I'm using on this part. Yes, sir. Read that real quick. Luke chapter. No, 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 no. Uh, skip down to verse um, 30. Yeah, just read 36 on down. Yeah. Yes, sir. Luke chapter 2 and verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. So she was from the tribe of Asher, right? Northern kingdom. Go ahead. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. Go ahead. And she was a widow of about four score and four years. Damn. That we sister was a widow for, for 84 years. Is that what it is? 84, four score? Yeah. Go ahead. Which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. So the foremother Anna had much faith. It said that she had a husband for seven years after her virginity. Then she became a widow for 40 and uh, for 80 and 84 years that's a long time because we don't because i mean we know she was at least 20 years old when she got married right seven years that would make her 27 so 27 plus 84 why i always end up doing math in my classes this ain't math class man the hell <laughs> i don't even want to do the math right now that's 111. that's 111 so she was 111 years old wow at least you know, if we if our calculations are correct. So the sister had a lot of faith, right? 84 years without a husband. Go ahead. And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all of them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. See that? All of our ancestors were looking for redemption in Jerusalem. Just like us. We looking for redemption. We looking for the Lord to come back. Even during that time, they knew they were they knew that they were slaves under the Romans. They knew that we had come out of the Greek captivity and, and the Persian Median captivity and Babylon before that. We knew our place. It's just today. You know, my brother argued with us on the, on the street last night trying to argue with me about Jews. They say Jews and Gentiles, brother, Jews and Gentiles. You understand? And we took on Isaiah 14. I said, what does that mean? The strangers going to be servants and handmaids, and we're going to rule over our oppressors. What does that mean? He was running from that thing. Soldier Lisha was with me. He ran from that thing. I made him ex I must explain that to me. Admit, you got to admit, he's well, that means we're going to rule over them. But that don't mean you. I said, you, you, you're the trick bag, brother. Satan's trick bag. <laughs> so I'll praise to the most high. So our foremother, Anna, and all our forefathers was looking for redemption. Get that in Acts 1 and 6 real quick, too. These just popped in my head. I'm sorry, y'all. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. We will get into the class. Read that. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So our forefathers were looking for Christ to restore the kingdom to Israel. It's just today we want to stay in America. Today we want to stay in the lands of our captivity because we've, come, we've become comfortable being enslaved. You understand what they say? You can't beat them, join them. That's the motto of the black man, the black woman, the Hispanic and native Indian. Right? Can't beat them, join them. Might as well go and start celebrating their Christmas. Might as well celebrate their Thanksgiving, even though it's the slaughter of my ancestors. Right? Might as well go and put the black face on and make fun of myself. You see that sometimes. You see that with like these young destroyed kids whose mothers and fathers told them to assimilate to society. 
you'll see them in college, they'll do that. They'll let the Edomites put ropes around their neck and stuff to make their Edomite friends laugh. Right? They'll act like monkeys and do stupid stuff to make their Edomite friends laugh. Our ancestors were at least the apostles and, and sisters like Anna, they weren't cooning like that. You understand? They were looking for redemption. And redemption means the casting down of your oppressor so that you and your people can prosper. Right? And that's what we all looking for. Okay? So uh, Satan's trick bag. Let's start off in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Like we mentioned earlier at the beginning, Satan got tricks, okay? And we're not ignorant of his devices. We know where these tricks are coming from. It's just that he's real subtle in how he uses them, right? So we're just going to go through a few scriptures today on Satan's trick bag, all right? And how he used Judas Iscariot and how he used some of these other brothers and sisters throughout the process of time, right? Because of their sins, their lust that was in them, he was able to um, he was able to be activated by the the lust that was in them. Okay, First Peter five and eight. First Peter chapter five and verse eight. Go ahead. Be sober. Be vigilant. It says, "Be sober. Be vigilant." Read. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So it says, "Be sober. Be vigilant." Do me a favor, uh, officer or soldier. Do me a favor and um, type in uh, the definition of vigilant real quick. I know, I know many of you probably know what that word means. If you could look it up on Merriam-Webster, that'd be great. I know many of you probably know what vigilant mean already. But for our brothers and sisters that are new, because we got a lot of new brothers and sisters online, COVID-19, although a lot of people are not able to congregate, a lot of brothers and sisters are starting to tune in online. So do, no, don't be weary. Don't think, oh, this gospel not going nowhere. You don't know who this gospel is reaching, okay? You don't know who bishops' classes are reaching, the deacons' and captains' classes are reaching, these daily breads. You don't know. So don't, don't, be, don't be fooled by what you think you know as far as numbers. Don't worry about numbers. So vigilant. Uh, alertly watchful, especially to avoid danger. That's good right there. Alertly watchful, especially to avoid danger. Now read the scripture for me again. Hold it up on the screen. Be sober. Be vigilant. So the Bible says be sober, not drunk, not high. Sober thoughts. Think clearly. Think about the word of God. Meditate therein day and night that you may have good success and be prosperous in this walk, right? That's what we all got to do, okay? You have to constantly reject thoughts in your mind. But it's telling you to be alertly watchful, especially to avoid danger because Satan wants you to be in Danger. Danger of what? Hellfire. Danger of losing your spirit, the spirit of the Lord, right? Uh, you can pull it down now. It's popping up all kind of ads. That's crazy. Uh, read it again. Be the sober. Let's go to the devil right there. Go ahead. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a. So your adversary is your enemy. Your adversary, someone that is against you, that wants to impede your progress. Your adversary, the devil, read. As a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And he's seeking whom he may devour, right? Satan been here for a long time. You read about Satan in the garden, tempting the first, uh, tempting uh, Adam, the alpha male, his wife, right? The alpha Adam, right? The number one Adam, tempting his wife Eve in particular. And being able to influence her, then to cause her to influence her husband. We're going to read about that later. So, Satan been here. He got tricks. He's been using these tricks for a long time, but he can only use what's in you. Right? We, I said that we know that the other day. He can only use what's already in you. Oh, he did with lust? Okay, I'm going to use that against him. Oh, he did with, uh, um, what's the word? Hatred? Okay, I'm going to use that hatred against him. Right? Satan uses these things. Now go to Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. So it says, Satan as a roaring lion Seeking whom he may devour. Luke 22 and 31. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. So this is Jesus, Jesus Christ, talking to Peter. Simon is Peter, Simon Peter. So he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. That's some heavy stuff right there. The Lord basically, Christ was basically giving Peter a look into the spiritual world. He said, look, in the spiritual realm, Satan wants you, bro. He has desired to have you. He has asked, request 
for you in particular, right? So you gotta you gotta ask yourself, what about me? When things are, when when I'm getting tempted, has Satan asked the Lord? Has Satan asked permission for me? Because that's the same thing happened in the book of Job. The Lord brought Job, brought Job up and said, hey, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. And Satan said, man, the only reason he worships you is because you got a hedge of protection around him. He living good right now. Let me touch him. You understand? Watch how he curse you to your face. Right? So Satan desired to have Peter. Right? Go to, let me show you an example of that. Go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. Then if you could also pull up, it's a, it's a picture I sent you in your telegram. It's a picture of the Zonovan Bible Dictionary. And it, and it, it speak about Peter, right? The Apostle Peter. All right? So let's go to Matthew 16, 21. Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. Come on. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is prophesying, right? He prophesied to say, look, I'm going to be betrayed and I'm going to be delivered to the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. And I'm going to die and I'm going to be raised again the third day. So now he's giving them prophetic word out of the scriptures, right? Go ahead. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So then Peter come out of nowhere and said, ho, 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 ho. What you talking about? What do you mean? You understand? He rebuke, rebuke me and correct, right? Peter about to correct Christ. Go ahead. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. You got to think about what Peter is saying to Christ. He's telling Christ, the son of God, the word of God, who, caught, who brought him into the truth. You understand? <laughs> Brought him into the knowledge. He now telling him, you wrong. That's not right. That's not going to happen. Right? Go ahead. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. So Peter had the devil on him. This is why Peter can now write to us, hey, <laughs> be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walk around as a roaring lion, roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. This is why Peter is able to write this. Because he had the devil on him. And he had to catch himself. Christ had to rebuke him and say, hey, get thee behind me, Satan. Go ahead. Thou art an offense unto me. Read. For thou savorest not the things that be of God. That's why. Because you savorest not the things that be of God. It said it pleased the Lord to bruise him. In Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. So when Peter come out of nowhere saying this, you understand? Saying, oh, no, that ain't going to happen. He going directly against the word of God. He had the devil on him. Because that's how Satan, you, Satan moves. Satan gets you. He get, Satan uses what's in you, right? He uses what's in you to use against you. That's kind of tongue twister. Satan uses whatever your desires and lusts are, he uses that against you. If, you. if you're one of them brothers and sisters that's never satisfied with what God has blessed you with, and not saying you don't want to better yourself, but you're never satisfied with the blessings you can't see the progress you've made in the last three or four years. You always got to have more and more. I'm talking about financial-wise. Money, 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 money. I got to have the money. I got to get the bag. got to get the bag. All right? You going after that, Satan going to use that against you. Okay, she wants the bag. Well, let's see if she'll break God's Sabbath for the bag. Let's see if she's willing to show her body for the bag. Same with the brothers. Let's, let's see if he's willing to um, celebrate Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving and all these things to get the bag. Let's see if he's willing to put the Santa Claus hat on and go on TV for a commercial for his job. You understand? Like, I'm not, this is me. I'm Personally, I'm not doing it. All right? Like, I remember when I was working at the radio station, they would try to get me to do, um, they would try to get me to take Christmas gifts to the clients and stuff. I just, I, man, look, I'm, I'm not comfortable doing that. What you mean? It's, it's, it's fun. It's Christmas. I just, I'm, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this, is, am I going to lose my job because of this? Would I lose my job for not taking? No, you're not going to lose it. Okay, well, yeah, I'm not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. I remember um, the first, I got there December 28th of 2016, something like that. So Christmas had passed. And I remember the boss at the time brought me a Christmas gift. She said, hey, you, well, you missed a Christmas party and I know you're new here. Here's a gift. Right, it was one of them canteens, one of the, the ones that keep the coffee hot and the ice cold and all that stuff. 
It was in my desk until I left. I never used it. I never opened it. The only reason I knew it was a canteen because I seen it from the top of the bag. I said, oh, okay. Boop, boop. <laughs> I ain't one offender. So I put it in my desk, and it stayed in my desk for two whole years. <laughs> it is what it is. I don't want to have nothing to do with it, you know? But Satan tries to get you comfortable in where you are, make you comfortable in your sin to blind you from the way you're really walking. And that was what's going on with Peter right here. Read uh, 23 one more time. But he turned and said unto Peter. And pull up that for me, please. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So you savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So this is from the Zonovan Bible Dictionary, right? So we're going to show you how, the, how Satan was trying to use what was already in Peter to cause Peter to go off. To where Christ had to rebuke him, rebuke the, Satan, rebuke the spirit of Satan that was in him at this time. He had the devil on him. The most, uh, Christ had to rebuke that. Right? Read that for me, officer. This is out of the Bible Dictionary. Peter, he was eager, impulsive, energetic, self-confident, aggressive, and daring. Go ahead. But also unstable. Unstable. Fickle. Fickle. Weak. Or fecal. Fickle. Go ahead. Weak and cowardly. So those bad attributes are those attributes of being unstable, fecal, uh, weak, and cowardly. Satan now is trying to you because that was a cowardly statement. Christ said, "Look, I'm gonna die, man. You understand? They gonna and I'm gonna raise, be raised up at the, at the third day. Have faith. No, oh, no. I Say, he was comfortable. Peter was comfortable having Christ around because Christ fed the brethren. He taught the brethren. He healed the people. He had much power. He didn't want that man to leave. Why would you want him to leave? You want him around you. You want this powerful man, man of God, the Son of God, around you." You're comfortable, but he was ignorant to what the desire was of the Lord. God's desire was for him to die for the nation of Israel. Now Satan jump on him because he's cowardly and uses that against him and cause him to try to rebuke the son of God, to try to go against counsel. <laughs> Woo, don't get me started on that. Go ahead. He was guided more by quick impulse. So he was guided more by quick impulse. Read. Than logical reason. Than logical reason. Maybe it's a reason Christ is saying this. Go ahead. And readily swayed from one extreme to the other. So in other words, he was unstable. He jumped from one extreme to the other. He overthought, like some of you. Peter was a, um overanalyzer. <laughs> he overanalyzed things. Wait a minute, hold on. Christ, you're going to die, and then that means you ain't going to be with us, and that means I can't. You know what I'm saying? He's going crazy right now instead of submitting to what Christ was saying. Go ahead. He was preeminently a man of action. He's a man of action. That's great. Read. His, his, his story exhibits the defects of his qualities as well as the tremendous capacities for good which he possessed. That's why Christ left him in charge. Go ahead. He was naturally forward and often rash. Naturally forward and often rash, meaning he just spew out whatever he thought. He didn't think. He just, ah, I'm just going to say it. Like some of you, just run, just run your mouth. First thing come to your mind, you say it. You be like, bro, why would you say that right now? Like it's not the time. <laughs> Go ahead. Liable to instability. Oh, instability. And inconsistency. Read. But his love for and associations with Christ molded him into a man of stability, humility, and courageous service for God, becoming one of the noble pillars. That's what we pray for. We are praying that although we, some, we are instable in some areas, that we are inconsistent in some areas, that our love for this work, our love for this truth, the Lord will mold us, right, into pillars for this truth, to do better things, to do greater works, like Christ said about in John, that we would do greater works than him. We pray that we're molded, and, uh, our, um, what's, what's the disadvantages or our uh, flaws and our what's for shortcomings, that we will be molded into that same type of pillar that Peter was. But Satan used the, the lesser qualities, the inconsistencies, inconsistencies and the instabilities and use that against Peter at that particular time. And Christ had to get him back on track. Say, bro, you out the spirit, you got the devil on you. You're thinking more about yourself and that which is of men and not that which is of God. And we often do that. And Satan will use that, right? Satan only has access to a few demons, right? But he uses them cunningly, right? He's subtle. Give me that real quick in Ephesians chapter 6. Let's read verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. 
right? So Satan has different devices, tricks that he will use against us, but it's only what's in us, right? Ephesians 6 and 11. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. And some of you might be saying, well, Satan trying to, he trying to get me to lust. I ain't never lusted. No, you've always had lust in you. You've suppressed it. So I ain't never been no liar. I ain't lied my whole life. No, yes, she was. If I went to ask your mama, she said, yeah, all he did was lie when he was a kid. All she did was lie. You just never realized that this was something that you, that was one of your shortcomings until you came in the truth and the Lord brought it to light. You're a liar. You're an adulterer. You're a murderer in your mind, right? You, you hate people. You have hatred for your brothers and sisters. You like to disattach yourself from people when they don't do what you say. When people don't give you what your desire is, you run. When trials come, you run. You're a runner, right? These All these things, the Lord now bring, makes uh, noticeable to you through this truth and through the leadership, through your brothers and sisters around you. They say, hey, man, you know, you might you deal with the spirit of lust. You got lust on you, bro. No, I ain't never dealt with no lust my whole life. I ain't never lusted after women. You're a liar. You are a liar. So you lie too then. So not only do you deal with lust, you deal with a lie spirit too because you refuse to see yourself. Right? Satan uses all this against us, y'all. Go ahead, Oz. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Go ahead. Put on the whole armor of God. So the Bible says put on the whole armor of God. I mean, what? The Bible. Put on the Bible. Go ahead. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Because Satan got tricks. Wiles is going into tricks. Pull up wiles real quick. I looked it up the other day. Look up wiles on the Merriam-Webster. If you still got the Merriam-Webster up, please look up wiles for me. It's real heavy, man. Our forefathers use words that when we go look it up, we like, oh, now I see what he's saying. That's some heavy stuff right there. Watch this. Look up wiles for me real quick if you don't mind. My brother. Look that up. Uh, read that for me real quick, uh, officer, please. Yes, sir. Uh, the definition of wile. A trick or stratagem intended to ensnare or deceive, also a beguiling or playful trick. Wow. Uh, uh, read one again. Number one. Uh, a trick or stratagem intended to ensnare or deceive. They say a trick or stratagem intended to ensnare or deceive. So Satan's intentions is to ensnare you or deceive you. This is why... A lot of times, many of us are not able to admit our sin, admit our shortcomings, right? Because Satan is meant, give me that real quick in, uh, in uh, Hebrews 3 and 13. Real quick. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. This is some heavy stuff right here, man. I'm telling you. Satan uses these things against the children of Israel, right? He uses against the, the other nations too, but they are the devil. You understand? So it's natural. But for us, we understand that when we apply these laws, we're the only righteous people on the planet Earth when we apply God's laws. Right? Read that for me. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. Watch this. But exhort one another daily. Exhort one another daily. Every day, you need to be calling a brother or sister. You need to be looking at YouTube videos. You need to somehow try to get in touch with someone in this truth, a believer. Read. While it is called today. While it is called today. Why you got a chance? Read. Least any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. It said, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful. Now, Satan uses your sin to deceive you into thinking you're straight. Get that in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 12. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. And I pray the Lord always give me the spirit to, to apply it and to remember this scripture. Because when you're going through your trials and when you're going through when sin trying to jump on you, when you think you're in good case, I always read this scripture. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth. Let him that think he in a good case. You good. I'm straight. I ain't got no flaws in me, no sin in me. Go ahead. Take heed lest he fall. We always got to take heed lest we fall in this truth. We have to take heed because you will think you in good case. You will think you straight. Oh, I'm good. The thing's been going pretty smooth for me lately. All the while, Satan's setting you up for a big old trick. He digging deep in his trick bag. You know what? Let me get deep down. Let me dig down here. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that lust, that, that spirit of anger, he deal with anger. And he don't realize that he, you know, that, that anger is driving this decision. I'm going to use that against him. I'm going to use that against her. Right? All these things. Satan has tricks. So that's why the, the scripture said that you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Sin is deceitful. So you always got to 
Think upon your, think about these things. Continue to be warned by the scriptures. Meditate in the scriptures so we don't fall to the same things that our forefathers fell to. The Lord gave us the roadmap. He put them, he put them through this. He put bishop and the deacons and the captains, our, our, and our forefathers, you understand? The men that came in before us, our spiritual fathers, our, our spiritual big brothers in this truth, he has allowed them to go through certain things in the building up of Israel United in Christ and the building up of this nation. So, And then now they give us wisdom and say, hey, don't do this. From my experience, this always happens when you do this. And we see that and we hear that and we don't want to apply that. And then when that same trial comes, we ready to leave. And we're like, Bishop's told us. He gave us the understanding. He gave us scriptures on this. Satan coming from this direction. Watch out. Satan to use this for this. And we, we, yet take, we yet to take heed to it. Right? Go back to Ephesians 6 and 11 for me. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. Come on. Put on the whole armor of God. Read. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So the wiles of the devil. We read it earlier. The wiles is a trick to beguile you. Right? Um, to deceive or ensnare. Okay, go from there. Go to 1 John 3 and 8. Let me show you one of Satan's tricks real quick. 1 John 3 and verse 8. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8. Yes, sir. He that committed sin is of the devil. It is. He that committed sin is of the devil. Right? Go ahead. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. So he that is committed to his sin, right? You are committed to to smoking that blunt every single day. You committed to watching pornography every single day. You committed to lusting. You understand? You committed to hatred. I'm going to just wake up just to hate. Hate, hate, hate. You understand? I just hate everybody. I hate you. I hate you. And I especially hate you. I don't even know you and I hate your guts. <laughs> That's what Dave Chappelle said on the on play a haters ball. You understand? Or the, the, uh, the international haters ball or whatever it was. I forgot what it was. Haters ball or something. When he used that skit, he said that. And that made me think about this. Some brothers and sisters that probably wake up and do the same thing because guess what? We have been taught to hate one another. We have been taught to hate other blacks and Hispanic and Native Indians, which are the Israelites according to the Bible. So if you committed to that, the Bible says you're of the devil. Now, if you fight in that, because the devil get on all of us at some time, we all got different sins and, and trials and, and thorns in our flesh that we're trying to fight off, right? But... If you're just giving in to it and it's just whooping and Satan just whooping you every single day and you have not opened up this Bible and said, let me meditate in these scriptures so I can get this spirit off me because I feel the spirit of the devil on me. You're committed to your sin. You are of the devil. That's scripture. Okay, read again. He, he that committed sin is of the devil. Go ahead. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Because the devil sinned from the beginning. Go ahead. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. So Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, was manifested. Go ahead. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So he can destroy the works of the devil. Meaning destroy what? Destroy sin. Destroy death. You understand? He came on the earth to do these things. And when he come back, it ain't going to be no more sin. We get in the kingdom, there's going to be no more sin. Lord's will. Right? Purge the, the, the rebels out in the wilderness. Then we walk into the land. It won't be. We, the Lord going to put the spirit on us. He's going to put it in our hearts to remember these commandments. Right? Right now, we fighting. We fighting the flesh right now. One day we won't have to fight this flesh. Go ahead. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. When you're born of God, you don't commit sin. You're not committed to your sins. Go ahead. For his seed remaineth in him. Because the seed of the Lord is in you. Read. And he cannot sin. Uh-huh. Because he is born of God. Go ahead. In this, the children of God are manifest. So by this, you're going to know who the children of God are. Go ahead. And the children of the devil. Because Satan has children. Satan got kids. Right? We know the other nations are the sons of Satan. You understand? Especially Esau, Amalek. Right? They the synagogue of Satan. He dwell in them. But you got Israelites, because remember Paul said, they are not all Israel that are of Israel. You got some Israelites that are the children of Satan. Right? They can repent. That's the only difference between us and the other nations. We can repent from our evil. They can't. They, their evil is going to be held against them eternally. We have an opportunity to repent of our sins. Right? Go ahead. So you don't have to be the children of the devil. You can come out of that thing. But Satan is using you as a pawn, right? Some of you sisters, Satan using you as a pawn against your husband. And you don't even know it. This man of God go to work every single day, do what he's supposed to do, got an office in the body, come home and got to deal with the devil at the house. Everything he say and do, you got a problem with it. You don't look at him as a man of God. Satan using you, sister. Satan is using you. Some of you brothers, you destroy your wives. You can't, you don't know how to talk. 
You don't know how to. You you just want to result to yelling and cussing and and raising your fist instead of saying, you know what? Let me dwell with her according to now. Let me use the scriptures. Let me be a man of God and set the example because a lot of brothers come in the truth and they want to lead their wife. You've been here four months. You've been here two months and you ready to leave your wife. You leave your wife, but she still got pants on. But we smell cigarette smoke when we get in your car. But you want to leave your wife to my she wicked. <laughs> Brother, you still learning. You still got evil in you. But that's what Satan do. Yeah, you can leave her. You can get one of them criticisms on that side. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You three months in, you no, don't don't even ask about that side of the room. Matter of fact, brother, don't even put you, don't even look over there. <laughs> We're gonna put a, one of them uh when I used to play ball, to work on your ball handling, to work on your dribbling, they used to give it back in the day they used to give you these glasses, right? And some goggles. And the goggles blocked your sight so you couldn't see down, so you wouldn't look at the ball. It really helped. It it, it got you used to dribbling the ball without being able to look down. Right? They do these things in all kind of sports. The band, I'm sure. You know, different things. They, they, they do stuff to, 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 to force you to learn how to use your instrument or force you to, to be better at whatever it is. Right? So they would do that. Right? So th that same thing, you know, Satan put them blinders on you. You can't see. You don't know. You, you ain't paying attention to what's going on. So you said, we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to have to put them blinders on brothers, put it on the side of their head so they can't look on that side of the room. If they, if the only way they're going to look on that side of the room is if they stand up and do like this. Then we know they're looking. Look at that brother. <laughs> look at that brother over there looking at this. <laughs> he done stood all the way up and turned his head. Right? New in the truth. Just got here. Want to prove somebody. No. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I done got all off topic. But it's on topic. Okay? Go to first, uh John 2.15. You did finish verse 10, right? No, free verse 10 again. Yes, First John 3 and 10. I'm sorry. In this, the children of God are manifest. Go ahead. And the children of the devil. So in this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil, right? Go ahead. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Go ahead. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Now for the new brothers and sisters that are on, go to Deuteronomy uh, 625. We got some new brothers and sisters that may be watching. They don't understand what righteousness is. So you want to be the children of God. You want to be the sons and daughters of God. You have to do righteousness, right? Because if you, if Satan is using you as his pawn, as his children, because you love your sin, that's some of his tricks. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 6 in verse 25. Go ahead. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments uh -huh. before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So that's our righteousness, to do the commandments. If we do the commandments, that is righteousness, Right? Uh, 1 John 2, 15. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. Yes, sir. Love not the world. So don't love this world. Go ahead. Neither the things that are in the world. Neither the things that are in this particular, in this world particular, in this particular kingdom we in today. Go ahead. If any man love the world. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. Give me James 4 and 4. So it says, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Why? Because... This world is against the Father. Watch this. We're going to show you. Get that real quick. James chapter 4 and verse 4. Yes, sir. The adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? The friendship of the world is enmity with God. Enmity meaning against, in opposition, contrary. Read. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world. Read. Is the enemy of God. Is what? The enemy of God. Whosoever is friend of the world is the enemy of God. So when you are walking hand in hand with this world, you are, in, you are the enemy of the Lord. You are against God, right? So anything that this world displays or puts on, um, get that real quick in Luke 16, verse 15. Anything that this world puts up in front of you as being something that is so-called right, I mean, so-called right, in the, like homosexuality is in front of our children. Um, uh, pedophilia, transgender, right? Lying. Like we were just talking about that last night we was teaching. We was like, your children, you like, you brought this up on the radio show the other day. You said you lied to your children for 18, 19 years about Christmas, Santa Claus. Then they find out when they're 19 years old, you lied to them your whole life. Then when they lying about where they at, who they with, who they sleeping with, you understand? What, who they affiliated with. Then they end up in prison. You say, why you lie to daddy? Why you lie to mama? And they looking at you like, nigga, you've been lying to me my whole life about Santa Claus. You've been lying to me about a whole life about uh, my father. 
about my mother. You understand? Like you lie, we lie to our children about Easter. We lie to our children about all these things. Then when they grow up and they become liars, and we try to hold them accountable for their lies, they they put it, they flip it on us. Say you're a liar. You've always been a liar, Mama. They, what? That ain't the same. I did I did it so you can get gifts. You understand? They looking like nah, nah. I ain't trying to hear that. You a liar. Go ahead. Luke chapter 16 and verse 15. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. You hear that? You are, ye are they that justify yourselves before men. You worried about how man looking at you. Don't realize that God's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. Read. But God knoweth your heart. God know what's in you. God know, and Satan know what's in you. Read. But that which is highly esteemed amongst men. So that which is highly esteemed amongst men, what men seem to, what men think is esteemed, right? Go ahead. Is abomination in the sight of God. Pants is an abomination for a woman to wear in the sight of God. But man see a woman with a nice shape in pants and forget that God says that's an abomination. We talk about that all the time, how quickly Satan could jump on us. We know what the scripture says. That sister's a walking abomination. She can repent of that. But right now, she in sin. God hate that. And we'll catch ourselves looking at the booty as she passed by. You, you see what I'm saying? That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. Shrimp and crab and lobster is highly esteemed. Bruh, I don't know about y'all, but Jackson, Mississippi ain't that big. I've been seeing kicking crabs and crusted crabs and mighty crabs all over the place. I'm looking like, what the hell? Where did all these seafood crab restaurants come, come from? They are literally feeding us roaches and spiders and telling us it's a delicacy they are feeding us poison and telling you come on in get you a big old i seen man oh lord will my family repent i seen one of my family members with a big old crab on the table they in there anything i gotta hit with a hammer to eat i don't think i want to eat that i ain't never had to bust a lamb over I ain't, never had to, I ain't never had to get the red snapper. You know what? Give me that. Ah! Yeah, that's how you get to the inside right there. Dip it in butter me. I know it kind of tastes salty. Put it in <laughs> Bro, <laughs> what, that which is highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination to God. Homosexuality is an abomination to God. Now you can't watch a show. And you know what they do? They get you seven episodes in. Then you find out the main character gay. You look like, oh. That's the wiles of the devil, man. That's Satan trick bag. He done got you tricked. You like, yeah. So guess what? After episode seven, you done got so locked in on the show, you overlook he gay. You root for him. He a homosexual. I remember the show uh, Power. James St. Patrick was a murderer and a drug dealer. And we sitting up here. When he died, everybody was hurt, man. Ghost, man. My boy, ghost, man. Ghost. <laughs> Ghost was a damn drug dealer and a murderer, an adulterer. The devil the, devil the Bible speak of, but because we like wickedness, we keep watching the show. Six seasons in. Hell, I done caught myself watching the show with his damn son. <laughs> he wicked too. I'm like, what the hell going on? <laughs> that's the trick. Hey, I'm telling you, that's that trick bag, man. Satan got tricks. <laughs> First John 5:19. That which is highly esteemed among men. We laughing, but this is real. It's funny, but it's like, damn. Satan got me in a trick bag. I need to get myself together. Oh. Some of you can handle those type of shows spiritually, but some of you that are new, you know, if your spirit ain't built up enough, because when I watch shows, I said, look at that wicked hair. Look how she did. Look. My wife be like, okay, I'll pray. <laughs> I get the bullet scripture. Hey, pause that. Now, you notice how... Can we watch a show and I not get rebuked for watching it? You're watching it with me. <laughs> First John 5, 19. First John chapter 5 and verse 19. Go ahead. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. So the world around us lies in wickedness, right? This is why Satan, when he came to Christ, he said, look, all that was given unto me, I give it to you. Just worship me. So we don't understand our brothers and sisters in the world, like the black bourgeoisie, like Bishop had went over a few weeks ago, they don't realize they're being used as pawns of Satan, many of them, right? Um, not all of them, because some of them brothers and sisters may repent one day and use their money for good to help the nation. But many of them don't care nothing about this Bible. They want the moolah. 
But they'll go to church on Sunday and give a lot of money. I seen a, a video the other day Tyler Perry gave um, a million dollars to T.D. Jakes. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up real quick, bro. I seen it on Facebook. I said, look at this here. And he was preaching. Get, look it up for me, bro. Please, find it for me. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Now, Tyler Perry and T.D. Jakes can repent. They better repent. <laughs> They're children of Israel, so they got an opportunity. If they take it or not, that's yet to be seen. But you know the most high going to do marvelous works. There's going to be a lot of celebrities, so-called celebrities and stuff in these last days that might repent. So, But until they repent, Bishop going to get on them. Yes, play that real quick. Watch this, y'all. Would, would, would you come tell what the Lord told you? Can you cut up a little bit? Come, come tell the people what you told me in the back room when we were talking about money. Look, look, look. That Medea right there. That's what I see when I see him. I'm sorry. Look, oh, he came and held a sister hand. Uh, God bless you. It's caught me a little off guard, Bishop. Shut up. You lying. Uh, uh, Y'all uh, stayed there. A couple there. of, uh, what was it, three or four days ago? Three or four days ago, I, I called. I was at Manpower. And uh, being blessed. Wrote my check out. I said, you know, I, I, I didn't have my checkbook when I got to Pastor White's. Uh, when I got to uh, uh woman that I lose tonight before and Pastor White said, you know, write a check for $113,000 for those of you who can. Write a, write a check for $113 for Psalms 113. And I wrote a check for $113,000. And I admit <clears throat> my intention was to just leave the check and bless God. Because see, I love to give. I've been a giver all my life. And when people have given to you uh oh, here come the preacher. And sown into you, and God has touched them and given. Here we go. Given you favor, because see, when you have favor with, come on, somebody. See, they don't come understand on, it where I come from. They don't understand it in Hollywood. But I'm going to tell you something about the blood of Jesus. Uh oh, you see that little shake? Pause, pause it. You saw that little, you saw that little, the little gyrate he did. That was Medea coming out. That was the devil coming out of him right there. Satan jumped on him, and he get a little vibrate, a little motion. You understand? He did a little pretty, pretty Ricky shimmy real quick. <laughs> Play it, bro. Look, all the people start standing up. All of my life, you know, my mother, she didn't have much to give me. She didn't have millions of dollars. She didn't have some legacy, but she had Jesus. Oh God. And she taught me about that God. So I didn't even know that he was he was trying to build this youth center. I didn't even know it, but I know how important the youth are. So we were sitting in the service, and I leaned up toward him, and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. So as... Come on, somebody. So when you got up here and you said a million dollars, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know I heard your voice. Lord, have mercy. He so did. He, cha he changed the hey. Look. That's a demon on his brother, man. I'm going to tell you right now, when you hear the voice of God, you move. Don't worry about what nobody says to you. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about your Don't worry he about your He will bless you. He will lift you. He will get Oh, my God. Boy, this is a trick. This is a trick like none other, bro. Take the mic. Now you keep it. You just keep on keeping. Sometimes yeah, you can pull it down. You can pull it down. About your hey, look. Now, I want you to fast forward where he anoint um, TDJ. I'm sorry, y'all. We're going to get back. I just go, yeah, go right, right uh, go, go a little bit further. Watch the men start going. Go, go back, go back a little bit further, a little bit further. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Right here, right here, right here. I pray the power of God all over you. I pray his favor. I pray the blood of Jesus will come upon you right now. So why do people have to come up behind him? Was this God, stage? I thank you for your blessings. Man, take it down, man. Take it down for somebody online. Go back to the church. Somebody online, and you just went back to church, didn't you? Some of you, some of you sisters said, glory, glory. <laughs> Read. Read 1 John 5, 19 again, man. Read 1 John 5, 19 again. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. And we know that we are of God. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness. 
Do not be deceived by vain words. Do not be deceived by soothsaying. That's sorcery. That's soothsaying. That's witchcraft. You understand? That's what that is. Because none of what he said came from Scripture. Everything he said came from emotion and from Satan. You understand? But our people get caught up in that thing, man. Hey, give me the, um, I sent you something on your telegram about Christmas, how they keep Christmas all over the world, real quick. So the whole world lieth in wickedness. Let show me that real quick. It's some crazy stuff, man. This Christianity, though, Christianity one-on-one. -on -one. All right, read that for me, officer. 21 photos that show how Christmas is celebrated around the world. Because remember, the scripture said the whole world lieth in wickedness. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God. And Satan will use that and manipulate you and use the jingle bells and all these different songs and melodies to get you in the Christmas spirit. Go down. You want those bullet points? Or? Nope. Okay. Read, read the, just read it. Just read the top. Just read the, the top of everything. Okay. Some people in the Philippines celebrate Christmas for five months. Some people in the Philippines celebrate Christmas for five months. So they celebrate the Christmas in the Philippines. Go to the next one. Go ahead. Many people in Japan like to eat fried chicken on Christmas. Wait a minute. They keeping Christmas in Japan. They eating fried chicken in Japan on Christmas. The whole world lieth in wickedness. Keep going. I don't want to read the I just want to read the top part. Go ahead. One Christmas tradition in Poland involves keeping a fish in your bathtub. What the hell is this? Go ahead. Many people in Finland celebrate Christmas with a trip to the sauna. You hear this? This is we know we've seen Japan, we've seen Finland, we've seen what was above this? Poland. Poland. We've seen uh, what was the very first one? I forgot. It's Philippines. The Philippines. Philippines, Japan, Poland. Go ahead. In the UK, stockings are hung from the end of beds, and the Queen gives an annual speech. Go ahead. That's in the UK. That's in London. Go ahead. Christmas in Croatia. Croatia. Go ahead. Can involve cleaning your shoes and avoiding Krampus. Go ahead. People in Greece might keep a fire burning during Christmas to ward off holiday goblins. Go ahead. Damn. What that said? Read that again. I missed that. What that say? People in Greece might keep a fire burning during Christmas to ward off holiday goblins. Wow. Go ahead. Christmas in Australia is often celebrated on the beach. So Australia, Finland, Poland, Philistine, uh, Phil I said Philistine, <laughs> Philippines, you understand? Argentina, uh, Belgium, London, Germany, Greece. They celebrate Christmas all over the world. Go ahead. In Argentina, some celebrate Christmas with fireworks. That's South America. Go ahead. For many in Ukraine, Ukraine, Christmas is celebrated on January 7th. Lord, have mercy. In the U.S., children leave cookies for Santa and hang their stockings on the fireplace. Oh, we know that all too well. People in Spain often open presents on Epiphany. Lord, I don't even want to know. The main celebration in Brazil typically takes place on Christmas Eve. Hanging giant paper lanterns is a common Christmas tradition in India. Wait a minute. Don't the East Indians, aren't they Hindu? Right? Krishna, right? So what the hell are they doing celebrating Christmas? I thought it was about Christ. I thought it was about Jesus' birthday. That ain't Christian. But they celebrate Christmas. It's a trick bag, man. You can pull it down. Right, We're going to be on here all day. Russia, too. Lord have mercy. Read 1 John 5, 19 again. 1 John 5, 19. They said fish in the bathtub, man. That's crazy. What the hell going on, man? Go ahead. <laughs> and we know that we are of God. Uh-huh. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. This is why the Lord said have no fellowship with the world. If you're a friend of the world, you can't be a friend of God. You're enmity with God. Right? Go to, uh, it's a little picture I sent you. said guardians. Guardians, guardians, guardians. Watch this. All right. Let's go to the very top. This is the United States Space Force's Twitter account. Read that. Today, after a year-long process that produced hundreds of submissions and research involving space professionals and members of the general public, we can finally share with you the name by which we will be known, Guardians. Guardians? What you guarding? 
<laughs> what are you the guardians of? <laughs> and who and who, who are you guarding from? They telling you in plain sight. They look at the look at the picture in the background. If you look in the picture in the background, there you see space right there, like it may be like a universe or something like that. Above all that is what's called the third heaven. And the Lord going to send Christ and his angels from there to attack this earth. You understand? To, to redeem the children of Israel from all over this earth and to destroy the nations. You understand? To cast down Babylon. So they said, no, we're guarding against that. Heritage, mission, culture, guardians, a name chosen by space professionals for space professionals. They done delved into space. What that is? Always above. Wow. Get that real quick in uh, Obadiah 1 4. I'm sorry, I just got to pull that real quick. The whole world lieth in wickedness. This is Satan's tricks. And you know what? Many of our people, yeah, the Space Force. You heard about that? Trump done initiated the Space Force. We're going to fight aliens. Okay. You're going to try to fight Jesus and you're going to get destroyed. Lou, you already lost. It's prophetic. Obadiah 1 and 4. Obadiah, verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, mm. thence will I bring thee down. So I said, thence will I bring thee down. Read verse 3. I'm sorry. Verse 3. Read 1 and then 3. Verse 1. The vision of Obadiah. Thus said the Lord God. Uh, concerning Edom, we have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Uh -huh. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Read verse 3. Verse 3. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Pull up that picture again. Let's talk about Edom. Esau, according to the Bible. So the pride of your heart has deceived you. This is prideful. To say you the gardens, always above. And, and you see how it's faded away a little bit? So you see it, but you don't see it. That's called um, symbolism. Right? Go ahead. The pride of thine heart have deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. So it's talking about Caucasians, so-called Caucasians, because they dwelt in the clefts of the rock. Go ahead. That saith in his heart, who shall bring me down That's to the right. ground? That's it right there. Who shall bring me down to the ground? We're going to always be above. Major habitation among the stars. Exalt yourself as the eagles. That's the Lord talking about Esau. Many of you going to follow Esau. Many of you going to run after him and trust in his medicine, trust in his, um, his war. Trust in him, trust in his stimulus checks, trust in all these things. Now, I'm not saying don't take the stimulus. I would never say that. But I'm just saying our people trust in it. I'm talking about our people that ain't in the truth. You trust in this world. And if you're a friendship of this world, you're the enemy of God. If you're rooting for this, you're the enemy of God. Because Christ coming to redeem you and your people, but you want to be a part of the guardians. Okay. Uh, go from there. You can drop that. Go back to 1 John 2.15. Somebody said, fire upon Christmas. That right. First John 2, 15. Come on. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you love Christmas, you love to, you're going you're gonna to represent and try to stand behind this, this new branch of the military, guardians that think you're going to fight against aliens, but you're actually going to fight against angels and, and Christ, Right? You are the friendship of the world. You love the things that are in the world. You love wearing your pants. You love smoking your dope. You understand? You love fornication, adultery, homosexuality. You're a friend of the world. You are of the world. Go ahead. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. Is not of the Father. Read. But is of the world. So those three things in particular are three main things that Satan uses. Lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Now, real quick, go to uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 18 and 19. Let's deal with lust of the flesh real quick. Lust of the flesh, lust of the flesh. Go ahead. Romans chapter 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh. In my flesh, I meaning this physical, carnal flesh we in, read. Do I have no good thing? There's no good thing in this flesh. Go ahead. For to will is present with me. To do right by the Lord and keep the commandments is present with me. My mind is telling me keep the commandments. Go ahead. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. You remember when uh, R. Kelly had a song, said, my mind telling me no, but my body telling me yes. I know a lot of y'all like that song in the world. And yes, it's an evil song, but that's what the flesh does. The flesh be like, I don't do it. Go ahead and, and do, do what's desires to your flesh. But your mind, like, I probably shouldn't be doing this. 
I know it's something wrong with this. All of us growing up, we knew it's something wrong. Like young men, we catch kids on the street right now, and we say, is it okay to kill somebody when they're five, six years old? They'll tell you no. And some of them will grow up and be murderers. So they knew from the time that they was young it was wrong. But this flesh tells them to do it. You ask a little girl, you got a little boy and a little girl, boyfriend and girlfriend, is that okay? They, ew, no, you got kids, no, right? Some of them, some of the kids be like, yeah, yeah. Six years old, yeah, yeah. Shoot, I got me a girlfriend right now. You know what I'm saying? At 9, 10, 11 years old, for real. Some 12, 13 years old already having sex. But many of them know, being young, that these things are wrong. It's not until they grow and are taught by society and the world around them that, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. That's Satan's tricks. He uses that against us and our children. That's why Paul said, in my flesh there dwelleth no good thing. When I, when I, when, when, when when I want to do good, evil is present with me. Did it say that? Read that again. No, that's the next verse. Read the next verse. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. He said, the evil that I would not, that I do. Go ahead. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. But sin that dwelleth in me. That's why I said Satan uses what's in you. Give me Zechariah real quick. Chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to show you something. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1. So Paul said, hey, look, every time I'm trying to do good, say, uh, evil is there. Satan is there. Every time I'm trying to do right, Satan is trying to use what's in my flesh against me. My own, de my own desires and lusts is he trying to use against me. Right? Zechariah 3 and 1. Watch this. The book of Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And Satan standing at his right. So he said he saw Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Give me that image. I sent you a little picture. I think it's like Homer Simpson or something. I couldn't find no good picture. Like of actual humans. This is a cartoon. But y'all remember this in cartoons? Where you had a, the, the angel on one side. And the, the devil on the other side, and the devil telling him, to, man, go on, do this, this, and that. And the angel like, no, don't do it, my son. It's just not going to be beneficial for you. And the devil like, man, don't listen to him, such, 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 such. And it's a, it's a back and forth. This is your spirit against your flesh. Your spirit know to do right. Keep the commandments. You know what the Bible say. Your flesh say, no, to hell with that. This is what I want. This is your desire right here. You mean to tell me you're going to miss out? You've been wanting this woman your whole life. Now she finally slid in your DMs. Yeah, you married, but I mean, you got a chance to get with your high school sweetheart. She wants you back. So now you're like, man, it's only going to be one night. Ain't nobody going to know about it. I can get it in. You can drop the picture. Zechariah 3 and 1 again. That's Satan. And Go ahead. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand. And Satan standing at his right hand. Go ahead. To resist him. To resist him. While you trying to do well and keep the commandments, Satan is at your right hand. You understand? Trying to force you and entice you by your own lust and, and um, ambitions, right? The things that you desire, right? Whatever it may be, right? Um, skip down to verse, keep reading, read, read to verse 3. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. It's just like he did. It's the same thing that happened with Peter. Peter had the devil on him. Christ rebuked it. Read. Even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Mm -hmm. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Read. Now Joshua was, cl was clothed with filthy garments. Filthy garments meaning what? Sin. He had sin. Read. And stood before the angel. And stood before the angel. Go ahead. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity. That show you that the filthy garments was what? His iniquity, read. To pass from thee. Uh-huh. And I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways. If you walk in the ways of the Lord, meaning what? Repent of the sin, put off your filthy garments, and now come back to God. Do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord. Read. And if thou will keep my charge, mm -hmm. then thou shalt also judge my house. And shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Amongst the angels, right? So that was that, that right there showing you that as you're trying to do well, Satan is always trying to uh, pull you back into the old you, the old man. That's the old man in you, right? And devil, and the devil is inactive. He's uh, being um, activated by those sins and those desires that's in you. These are his tricks, right? Go from there. Go to uh, Luke 22. Let's read verse 1. We'll deal with Judas Iscariot real quick. Then we're going to shut it down. 
Luke 22, let's read verse 1. Luke chapter 22, verse 1. Luke chapter 22 and verse 1. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. So the Feast of Unleavened Bread is called the Passover. Go ahead. And the chief priests and scribes sought how they might kill him. Kill who? Jesus. Read. For they feared the people. But they, for they feared the people, so they had to find a way to do it. They couldn't just go up and just kill him. They had to find a way to do it deceptively. Satan using these men because they wanted preeminence and they hated Christ in the word. They wanted to continue to extort their people for money. They wanted to continue to commit adultery and nothing be done. They wanted to continue to be hypocrites, to pervert judgment. Right? Go ahead. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. You hear this? You only read this one time in the Bible that I know of. There may be another time where it says Satan actually entered into a person. I think it does say it somewhere else. So let me not say that statement. You only read it somewhere. That would be a bold statement to say. That's a blanket statement, as the Edomite I used to work with say. That's a blanket statement. So let me not use that, all right? But right here we're reading where Satan literally entered into someone, right? Read again. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Read. Being of the number of the twelve. Being of the number of the twelve. So if he was of the number of the twelve, that means Christ gave him power over unclean spirits and to cast out devils. Mm -hmm. just, like, just like today, the Lord gave a spirit to us to go out here and teach the word. Right, he put it on our leadership, and leadership gives us the understanding that they have, and the spirit of the Lord come on us, and we go out and teach. So we are able to go out now and teach the word and cast devils out of people with the word of God. And yet, uh, not not uh, I'm gonna say all of us, but a, a lot of brothers and sisters fall out the truth. What is in us that Satan sees to cause us that we love so much that causes us to lose that spirit? That's a scary thing that we read. And this brother literally walked with Christ. Right? Because what Satan do, he makes you think that you're good. We read it earlier in Hebrews 3, right? The deceitfulness of sin. Give me Galatians. I mean, I said Galatians. Genesis. Genesis 3 verse 1 real quick. We're going to read 1 to 5. I just want to show you a quick example. I won't go through breaking it all down. I just want to give you a quick example. Read that real. Genesis 3 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Watch this. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. When we read wiles earlier, right? Go ahead. Which the Lord God had made. And mm -hmm. he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Read. And the woman said unto the serpent, Ye may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Read. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. But that tree in the midst of the garden, right, that doctrine, that person that's got this doctrine, read. God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. Don't eat of that. Read. Neither shall ye touch it. Lest you die. It, neither say you touch it, lest you die. So she knew the law. Just like us today. We know the law on adultery. We know the law on lying. We know the law on fornication. We know the law on uh, covetousness. Right? So she knew the law. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto her, unto the woman, you shall not surely die. God ain't going to kill you for not wearing fringes. God ain't going to kill you for this one little lie. God is not going to kill you for watching porn. This is what I'm trying to tell her, but I just don't believe. The Lord going to kill me for me eating my pork. And Paul said, if you pray over that's what the brother told me last night. I just can't see God being that petty. That's petty. That's man stuff. Man kill you for not having a beard. Man What? <laughs> what man has been killed for not having a beard? What the hell is he talking about? By another man, I mean, like it's man's judgment. Right? These are the judgments of God. That's why Christ said, he that breaketh one of these least commandments and teach men's soul shall be what? Least in the kingdom of heaven. I mean, you're not getting in. So don't let Satan deceive you like he tried to, like he deceived Eve to make you say you're not going to die. If the Lord said you're going to die from it the way the sin is death, and we understand we, we fear God, then you got to say, okay, every little thing, these little things I need to be trying to get right. I'm not saying all of us going to be without sin when Christ returns. Well, I'm just spotless, clean with no sin. And if the Lord won't have mercy, I don't know who the Lord said, I'm going to have mercy on whom I'm going to have mercy for whatever reason I choose to. But I do know the Bible say you ain't getting the kingdom of God if you're breaking God's law. If you're willfully breaking the laws of God, you understand? You're going to battle. You're going to have thorns in your flesh. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to endure. But we know that we can't just sit up here and just, I'm going to just keep smoking weed till Christ comes. I'm going to commit adultery until Christ comes and then we'll sort it out then. No, you ain't getting the kingdom. Thus saith the Lord, right? So he said, ye shall not surely die. Go ahead. But God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof, 
then your eyes shall be open. He said, man, no, nah, you ain't going to die. It's really benefits in that. That's what Satan tell you in your mind. He trick you in your mind to make you think there's benefits in lying. Because if I didn't lie, because some good may, in your mind, some good may come from it. Like you told a lie and that, that caused a brother to actually be able to get the job off of something. I don't know. Right. You lied to another brother. You know what I'm saying? It's for him to get, the, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the case may be. Or a brother about to get in trouble, he done, he done did something foolish, and you lie for him to get him out of it. You say, that was a good thing, though. You know, I lied, he was able to. What? You start rationalizing your mind that this is okay. Well, see, if I wouldn't have did that, then my son wouldn't be here, and God going to use my son to be a prophet. That's what you say in the truth. You're going to commit adultery in the truth, get another woman pregnant, and bring forth a son. <laughs> and she give you custody and the young man grow up and start being, what the hell? Like in your mind, you trying to rationalize, see? So it could be some good come from that brother. That's another soul to come and do the work. What? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> we got that sound bite? Don't play it. So it said, for God know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So that's the same thing with kids. A lot of our kids grow up, especially that's growing up in the truth, they don't, they, they don't, they don't, they're not, they not growing up under thinking that or knowing that it's okay to, have, to fornicate because we don't teach them that because the Bible don't teach that. But one day, they're going to be challenged. One day, our children that were raised in this truth are going to run across a video or going to see a friend or see somebody out and about that's going to mention something to them about sex. You understand? And we, that's why we got to go in the Bible and prepare them for these things. They're, they're going to say it's benefiting that. It's benefiting this. Satan did that. That's a trick. Go back to first, uh, go back to Luke 22 and 3. We almost done. Luke 22, verse 3. The book of Luke, chapter 22 and verse 3. Yes, sir. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot. Surname Iscariot. Go ahead. Being of the number of the twelve. So he was one of the twelve disciples. The brother had power. Go ahead. And he went his way. And commune with the chief priests and captains. So now the same chief priests and captains who Christ told Peter in Matthew 16, I'm pretty sure Judas was in the area, in the vicinity, probably, possibly. Hey, I'm going to be betrayed of the chief priests and the scribes. Then Judas, not thinking because he got the devil on him, go to the same people who Christ said was going to kill him. Damn. You gone. We you read, hey, the, the white man, the devil, did you run to the white man to try to find dirt on us? to be an informant against us. Wow. At one time you knew he, you know what I'm saying? That means the spirit gone. Go ahead. How he might betray him unto them. Wow. And they were glad. And they, and they were happy that a, a coon, a traitor, came and helped them. Go ahead. And covenanted to give him money. And they covenanted to give him money. Go ahead. And he promised. And he promised. He forswared himself. Read. And sought opportunity to betray him unto them. So he's sitting amongst Christ watching him. But saying... Well, we good, we good, we good. Yeah, hey, Lord, shalom, 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 shalom. But in his mind, he said, I'm going to betray this Negro. I'm going to take a recorder and record him for years, just in case. Wow. Go ahead. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. In the absence of the multitude, when people aren't around. So how, how can we get him when the people ain't around? That's some, what, that means he had to watch everywhere he went, all that. Go to uh, John uh, 12 and 1. Before he read that, pull up the video of Judas for me. There's a movie coming out called Judas and the Black Messiah. And it's based around the Black Panther Party and Fred, Ham uh, Fred Hammond, right? Is it Hampton? Hampton. Fred Hampton, right? And how he was betrayed, right? Show that real quick. Hopefully they don't shut us down for Deputy this. Deputy Chairman Fred Hampton of the Illinois Black Panther Party. Repeat after me. Look at Judas. Hey, you see the Edomite back there. Woo, let's say that. You're looking at 18 months for the stolen car, five years for impersonating a federal officer, or you can go home. Covenant. Pause it. The Black Panthers. Pause it. You saw that, didn't you? He covenanted with him. He covered it with them for 30 pieces of silver for money to betray the black Messiah, Jesus Christ. 
Same thing. Go ahead. A forming a rainbow coalition of oppressed brothers and sisters of every color. Their aim is to sow hatred and inspire terror. I will learn all that I can. I will learn all that I can. These ain't no terrorists. You hear this, Paul? He's, you heard what he said? The Edomite said, they trying to instill hatred and, you know, be terrorists. Then it show Fred Hampton lifting up the kids. I'm going to do right. I'm going to go to school. I'm going to help my brothers and my sisters in my community. I won't sell drugs. I will not murder my brother. I will not join gangs. The white man said, no, they're terrorists. That's terrorism for kids to be righteous. For black kids to be righteous, that's terrorists. That's the same Christ thing Christ was doing. The chief priest and, the, and, the, and the, um, the scribes and the Pharisees said, no, kill that man. Wow. Go ahead. You can't murder liberation. You can murder revolutionary, but you can't murder revolution. And you can murder a freedom fighter, but you can't murder freedom. Look at him. Judas and scary. Hey! Look how he inspired people. Pause. You can take it down. Look how he inspired people. That's the same way Christ inspired the brothers and sisters. They was inspired by Christ. They said, hey, man, when he knew they were going to make him king, he had to go lead. They were going to make him king. They said, you the king of the Jews, man. This the king right here. You understand? Now, we know Fred Hampton, our brother, was in the Black Panther Party, but we don't know whose spirit was in that brother. We don't know what, which one of the prophets' spirit was in that brother. You understand? They always killed the prophets. Now, he wasn't teaching repentance. He wasn't teaching we the Israelites. But they was trying to do something for their people. You understand? Same spirit. Now, go to John 12, verse 1. Let's deal with Judas real quick. John chapter 12 and verse 1. Go ahead. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead. Whom he raised from the dead. Same thing that our people, which we trying to do now, raise our people from the dead. Go ahead. There, Spiritually. There they made him a supper, Read. and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Go ahead. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with hair. Go ahead. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Go ahead. Then say of one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. So then, so now the sister doing this with this very expensive uh, ointment. She's uh, washing or uh, wiping Christ's feet with her hair, right? And it says, Judas is scared at him. It highlights him for a reason. Watch this. Read. Simon's son. Read. Which should betray him. Which what? Should betray him. Read. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence? Why we didn't sell this for 300 pence? We could have made money off of that. Read. And given to the poor. And given to the poor. But he didn't really want to give it to the poor. Watch this. This he said. Not that he cared for the poor. He didn't say it because he really cared about the poor people. Read. But because he was a thief. Because of what? He was a thief. Because he was a thief. He wanted that money. He could have used that and sold that and put that in his pocket. He had a covetous spirit. Satan used that covetous spirit inside Judas to cause him to betray the son of God. Read. And had the bag. It had what? The bag. That's what they say now, ain't it? I need the bag. I got to get the bag, man. By any means necessary. Same spirit today. Go ahead. And bear what was put therein. And bear what was put therein. Now. When we just saw on the the the, the Black Panther on the uh, the movie Judas is, Judas and the Black Messiah, remember the Edomite said you got 18 months for stolen car, and impersonated a federal officer. The brother was a thief. He stole the car. Esau said we're gonna use that against you, to portray him. Satan used that against man. Come on, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's Tyler? Come on, somebody. Y'all don't hear him. Y'all don't hear the scripture. Uh, go from there. Go to uh, Ezekiel 1830 real quick. Ezekiel 1830. This is why the Bible tells us to repent of our sins. Because Satan uses his devices to, in, to uh, use what's inside us against us. Right? Ezekiel 18 and verse uh, 30 real quick. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. Come on. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel. O house of Israel. Every one according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent. And turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Turn yourselves from your transgressions. Repent. Turn yourselves from your transgressions. Repent. Read. So iniquity shall not be your ruin. That's what Ju Judas's ruin was. Now it was prophesied that Judas is going to do this. We understand. 
right? It was prophesied that Judah's going to do this. We understand. But there's a story within the story. There's always an underlying story for us to look at. Judas didn't know that he was chosen to betray Christ. He was only going off of his lust. Satan used what was in him against him. He didn't know that he was born to betray Christ. How could he have known that? He, when he was walking with Christ, when Christ first gave him the spirit, he already had covetous in, covetousness in him. But he didn't know that one day it would lead him to betraying Christ. And as it was going on, he didn't realize he had the devil on him. He was doing what he had always done. You understand? That's why the Lord said, repent of your sins, that your iniquity will be not your ruin, will not be your ruin. Go back. Now go to John 17, verse 12 real quick. I got two more scriptures and we're done. Or two more passages. John 17, 12, real quick. John chapter 17 and verse 12. Go ahead. While I was with them in the world. This I, is Christ speaking. He's praying to the Lord. While I was with them in the world. I kept them in thy name. I kept them in thy name. I taught them your commandments, okay? I, told, I taught them what they need to do, Lord. Read. Those that thou gavest me. Those that thou gavest me, read. I have kept. I have kept. Go ahead. And none of them is lost. And I hadn't lost none of the ones you've given me, Lord. Watch this. But the son of perdition. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But what? The son of perdition. But the son of the de son of perdition with his destruction, right? Which is what? Go ahead. That the scripture might be fulfilled. So let's see what it means, the son of perdition, right? Go to Psalms 109 and verse 1. Psalms chapter 109, verse 1. Real quick, we're going to read down to 8. Psalms chapter 109, and let's read verse 1 down to 8. Psalms chapter 109, verse 1. So remember, he said, I ain't lost none but the son of perdition. That the scripture might be fulfilled. Let's see. Go ahead. Hold not thy peace, O God, Read. of my praise. Read. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. So this is prophetic of Christ. This is Christ speaking through David. He said, for the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They were lying on him. They were spying on him. They were using people to manipulate uh, the mind of Pilate to say he did this, he did that. Read. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. And they lied on Christ. He did no sin. Read. They compassed me about also with words of hatred. Read. And fought against me without a cause. They ain't had no cause against Christ other than they hated him and they hated the Lord. Read. For my love, they are my adversaries. So I'm dying for them, but they want to be against me. They're my adversary. Go ahead. But I give myself unto prayer. But I'm going to pray to the Lord. Read. And they have rewarded me evil for good. They have given me evil for the good I've done for them. Read. And hatred for my love. And hatred for my love. Because they said no greater love than a man lay his life for it, for it down for his friends. Christ loved the nation of Israel. That's why he died for the nation of Israel. Read. Set thou a wicked man over him. He said, wait a minute. Set a wicked, wicked man over him. Him in particular. Him, him, him. Read. And let Satan stand at his right hand. Wait a minute. Let Satan stand at his right hand. Let Satan. That's why I said about Judas, Satan entered into him. Read. When he shall be judged. Let him be condemned. Uh huh. And let his prayer become sin. Read. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. So somebody might say that ain't talking about Judas. That said, let it, well, that ain't talking about Judas. Go to Acts chapter one verse fifteen. Let's see. So remember, Christ said, I, I ain't lost none of them, but that one, the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Satan came on this brother. Satan used that covetous, uh, thieving, stealing spirit. That was in Judas to betray the son of God. And he do the same to our, some of our brothers and sisters to this day. Because people never leave. People never leave because they got the spirit of the Lord on them. People leave because they got the devil on them. It's always an excuse. How you I see did this to me? How you I see did that to me? Wait a minute. How you I see made you do a backdoor marriage and you married this wicked woman and now she taking you through hell? How you I see made you marry that wicked man that's putting his hands on you that the leadership told you not to marry because we don't know nothing about him because he ain't in our camp. We can't vouch for the brother. You go after your lust and go um, have sex with the brother, have to marry the brother. Do you want you go get pregnant? Do you want IUIC to, to take care of you? Well, Y'all destroyed me. It was you. Acts one fifteen. It's always it's always IUIC. It's always bitching that thing. It is. De the deacons did that to me. The what? You are you talking about the same brothers that helped you pay your rent? Oh, oh, the same brothers that help you put food, got the pantry for food to make sure you straight. Oh, the same brothers that stayed up late at night to give you wise counsel to help you with your spirit. Oh, now all them men evil. Everybody evil except you. You the one fornicating now. You the one back in the Christian church. You the one esotology. You the one back smoking weed, but we all wicked. The devil is on you. Satan has used what was in you to get you to, to betray your people. One of his tricks. Acts 115. 
Acts chapter 1, verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. Right. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas. So David prophesied of Judas. The Holy Ghost, meaning the spirit of Christ that was in David, prophesied of Judas. So he said, I ain't want to talk about Judas and scary, right? Shut up. You don't know the Bible. Read. <laughs> Which was God to them that took Jesus. Wow. Go ahead. But he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Read. Now, this man purchased the field with, with, with the reward of iniquity mm. and falling headlong. And he fell headlong. That means face first. Read. He burst asunder in the midst. He burst asunder in the midst. Wow. Ooh, and read. His bowels gushed, and all his bowels gushed and out. And his bowels gushed out. Oh, my God. That's a horrible death right there. Remember, Christ said it better be better. That man ain't even been born. He going to die a horrible death. Judas Iscariot died a horrible death for betraying the Son of God. Read. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, in so much as that field is called in the in their proper tongue, uh -huh. a caldama, uh -huh. that is to say, the field of blood. Read. For it is written in the book of Psalms. It's written in the book of Psalms. Let his habitation be desolate. Uh -huh. And let no man dwell therein. Uh huh. And his bishopric. And his what? His bishopric. Read. Let another take. Wait a minute. Didn't we just read that in Psalm 109? Let another man take his office or his bishopric, which is his office. He was a bishop. That was taken from him and given to Matthias. Or Matthias, excuse me. Right? You read about that later on. Matthias. That was given to him. So the Bible prophesied about Judas Iscariot before he was ever even born. This is why I go back to 1 John 2, verse 15 and 16 again. Go back to that. Then we're going to shut it down. 1 John 2, 15, 16. 1 John chapter 2, and verse, 16. Six, verse 16. For all that is in the world. All that is in the world. Read. The lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. Lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And the pride of life. Read. Is not of the Father, but what? is of the world. Read again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father. Not of God, read. But is of the world. That's of the world. These are all the things that you see. You see the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. He wanted that money. You understand that? The pride of life, that pride that came upon him to, to, to betray, the word, betray the word of God and betray the son of God. Right? But I got to show this real quick. The lust of the eyes real quick. Give me that Bobby Womack. It's an article about Bobby Womack. I'm going to show you something real quick. Some of you may or may not know who Bobby Womack is. He's a famous singer, right? He was one of the best friends of a man named Sam Cooke. You know, um, uh, what's the name of the song that he did? Um, Change Gonna Come, right? Some people, <laughs> I read an article that said some people said he, Sam Cooke got, got killed because he went from gospel singing to R&B and all that stuff. Shut up. That gospel singing the devil too, hell. <laughs> now, pull up that article on Bobby Womack I sent you real quick. All right, the secrets of Bobby Womack. Just go down. It's a part that I want to show you. Down real quick, down real quick. Right here. Uh, no, down one more. So Sam, he was Sam Cooke's friend. Go, go back, go back up, go back up, go back up. Uh, right there was it. Shortly after Sam Cooke's death. Right there. Yes, sir. I like that for us. Yes. Shortly after Cooke's death, Womack offered counsel and comfort to Cooke's widow, Barbara. Hmm. That happened a lot of time in the black community. Dude been checking for your girl for a long time until he see opportunity. Brother did his opportunity. Counsel and comfort. Go ahead. But three months after Cook's death, and just as Womack, Womack turned 21 years old, young man, he went a step further, marrying Cook's still grieving wife. Wait a minute. I thought she was grieving. How's she going to marry somebody she grieving? Wow. You, you got to think about things like this. Now, I'm not saying Bobby Womack had anything to do with the brother dying, but I'm showing you that your own brothers, your own sister that's amongst you could be looking out for what you have. That's the lust of the eyes. You understand the lust? That's why the Lord said, hey, don't, don't believe in that. Don't follow that. Don't lust of the world. That's not of Christ. That's not of the Lord. Go ahead. They didn't let his body get cold in the ground. Damn. Family members sniffed in the Pittsburgh Courier. This is what his family members said. They ain't even let his body be dead, cold in the ground before she went and married another man and he married her. Now go to his lyrics. I had put a thing about his lyrics in one of his songs. Bobby Womack had a song called I Wish She Didn't Trust Me So Much. You got to ask yourself, why would he make a song like that? Right? 
pull up those lyrics. I sent you a screenshot of them. This some heavy stuff right here, man. Give me that uh, Surah 41 real quick. But watch it. Before you, well, as you get in that, uh, we're going to read these lyrics. This is a lyric for the song, I Wish You Didn't Trust Me So Much. Look at this real quick. Read that for me. Lyrics. I'm the best friend he's got. Mm. I'd give him the shirt off my back. He knows he can trust me with his life, but he's trying to leave me alone. Leaves me alone with his wife. You hear this? <laughs> he put this in a song, man. Then married the wife of the brother who was supposed to be his friend three months after he died. Go ahead. I wish he didn't trust me so much. <laughs> I think he really trusts me too much. Wow. <laughs> he, don't, he don't know I'm a nigga. He must don't know who he dealing with. Watch this. How can he be so blind? How can he be so blind? We both got the same good taste. I've been telling him how fine his wife is. <laughs> I sure wish I can get me one like you. Damn. Go ahead. You should know when he's gone on his business trips, I can't help watching his woman because I'm losing my grip. He said, I'm losing my grip. I got the devil on me. <laughs> and I want his woman. Wow. This is why the Bible says the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Hmm. Go ahead. I wish he didn't trust me so much. I think he really trusts me too much. Read. Though I swear all is not my will, but there's a way. Wow. There's a way she make me feel. Lord, I'm scared. So scared of what I do if she starts feeling the same way too. Wow. I wish he didn't trust me so much. I think he really trusts me too much. All right, you can drop it. Give me the book of Sirach, chapter 41, verse 17, real quick. Sirach, chapter 41, and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Be ashamed of whoredom before a father and mother, and of a lie before a prince and a mighty man. So this is a list of things you should be ashamed of, right? Um, skip down from there. Skip down to, I can't find Sirach 41. Am I tripping? I'm tripping. I'm looking for 47. I'm tripping. All right. So it said, be ashamed of whoredom before father and mother and a lie before a prince and a mighty man, right? So these are things you should be ashamed of. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. And to turn away thy face from thy kinsmen. Be ashamed to turn away your face from your kinsmen. Your brother and sister need you be there for them. Read. Or to take away a portion Read. or a gift. Or to gaze upon another man's wife. You hear this? That's sin. The Lord said to be ashamed of that. The brother said, no, I'm marrying that. The brother trusts me way too much. He don't know who he messing with. I want this woman. Hey, I'm telling you the same thing spirit going on in Israel. You hear we bleh, fornication and adultery going on in Israel all the time. Don't think it ain't. Some of it hasn't been revealed yet. Some is getting revealed right now. A lot of it got revealed during the pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic. It says to be ashamed to gaze upon another man's wife. Watch this, read. Or... To be over busy with his mate. This is why we always tell brothers, hey, man, get man, the sisters over there. Why are you over there laughing and talking with the sisters, brother? Come over here with the men, man. What the hell wrong with you? <laughs> you understand? Like, get the hell from over there. You understand? Because you over busy. You playing with her too much. You gazing into her eyes. You talking to her. Don't do that. Don't, they, I don't like, I hate, I, bro, that's, I make me nervous. I'm in the kitchen and you're here at the school doing something and somebody's wife walk in on the kitchen crew. I'm on our echelon, see? You understand? Because I don't want to know. We got cameras in there. I'll pray to the most high. <laughs> There's cameras everywhere. You're being watched. Don't be over busy with another person's wife or husband. For you sisters, don't be laughing and talking to another sister's. Now, now understand, leadership, shaloms, brothers and sisters. Some sisters we've known a long time. We give them a little side hug. Shalom says, how you doing? And keep on moving. But don't be gazing into their eyes and locking eyes and Sitting over there having a long, intimate conversation with somebody else, wife or husband? That's evil. That's the lust of the flesh. Go from there. Go to uh, my last scripture, Sirach 9, because I got to go. <laughs> I got to be somewhere at 9. I'm going to be late. Y'all help me. It is what it is. People need the word. Sirach 9 and verse 8. Sirach chapter 9, verse 8. Come on. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. And look not upon another's beauty. Mm. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Or some sisters have been deceived by a handsome man. Read. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. You hear that? Love is kindled as a fire. That lust is in you and now it's burning. Now you're thinking about them. You're looking at their Instagram, Facebook, knowing they're somebody else's. Telling you. Go ahead. Sit not at all with another man's wife. The Lord said don't sit with nobody else's wife. Nor sit down with her in thine arms. And what? 
nor sit down with her in thine arms. Man, don't arms. be sitting holding nobody up white like, yeah, sis, I'll pray to you. What the hell? You trying to get judged instantly. That's instant judgment. <laughs> to me, I'm nervous. That's some instant judgment. Hey, come on, come on, come on, come on. I have some sisters that, that have been with us for five years almost that I've never hugged anything. I'm just, I'm nervous about it. You know what I'm saying? Because the Bible say that read it again. No, sit down with her in thine arms and spend not thy money with her at the wine. Sis, you want to go get something to drink? Your husband ain't. He, he at work. Well, he remind you, you. You need counsel, right? You need to talk, right? You know what I'm saying? You, you can vent to me. What's going on, sis? I mean, one time a sister wanted to counsel without a husband. What? <laughs> sis, you got the devil. No, no, ma'am. That ain't what we do. You got big sisters for that. You got captains and deacons wives for that. Call them for individual counsel. Don't come up to what? No, no. Your husband ain't present. We can't counsel. Sorry, sis. Because the scriptures say abstain from what? All appearance of evil. That's an evil appearance. Go ahead. Least thine heart incline unto her. Because you get to look at it like, I ain't know you, I ain't know your lips was. I like that lipstick you wearing. I didn't know your eyes, you got a little hazel tint. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know your hair. You know, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you get the gaze. And the Lord is trying to stop us from going after these lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh, brothers and sisters. The Lord is trying to, you get to staring too long and evil thoughts conceive in your mind. And you forget that that's somebody else's husband or wife. Go ahead. And so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction. And through your desire, you fall into destruction. Brothers and sisters, don't fall for that thing. That's the evil thing in Israel right now. It's happening in Israel right now. Satan got tricks, man. I'm telling you, he got tricks. He know what to use against you. But God has given us the safeguard. The Lord done gave us already and gave us the blueprint. The Lord has given us the cheat sheet. The Bible is the cheat sheet. You know how they had cheat sheet in school where everybody, somebody got a copy of the test and sent it out to everybody? The Lord gave us the cheat sheet with the answers already on it. But that, that lust, that, that desire in us, it causes us to go against what we know is right, against the cheat sheet. You know the answer A on, on one, but you tempted to, to, to circle B. You know the answer A. You got the cheat sheet. <laughs> you did. You got in trouble. <laughs> all praise. All praise. All glory to the Lord, brothers and sisters. I pray y'all got something from the class this morning. Lord's will, the most high, continue to bless you. Uh, Lord's will, the most high, continue to bless you. I pray for our leadership, man. We got some mighty men that's leading us. Let's pray for them, pray for the bishop, the deacons, the captains, these mighty men, the officers, you know what I'm saying, the, the soldiers, the brothers that's going out, doing the work, teaching the people. Let's pray for that the most high have mercy on our souls, the most high have protection on us as we go out to the highways and hedges. Join the Booster Club, help the leadership get to the four corners of the earth, man. We need the leadership to get to the four corners of the earth to raise up the 12 tribes, all right? And you know when this pandemic, you know the bishop. The bishop is a mighty man. He going to put in the work. He not going to make no excuses. When this thing is lifted, he gone, I'm telling you. All right, so let's be mindful, okay? Let's send up prayers, all right? So stay in the spirit, brothers and sisters. Lord, wish y'all got something from the class. Shalom. I'm also going to lie. I, 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 I,